Hey everyone, Love Coach Macy here. Welcome to Love Vibe TV and super loved. I'm so happy you're here. Today I have a really special guest joining us in what I'm calling Cockroach Confessions. And in Cockroach Confessions, I am actually interviewing a cockroach from New York City, which I know, I know many of you out there are probably going, ew, 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 why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, if you're joining, please say hello, by the way. Um, the reason why we're doing that is because um, I was asked, I was asked to um, help Kevin from New York, who is a New York City cockroach, with his love life. And we, as many judgments as we have around bugs and especially cockroaches, right? How many times have you been like, ew, online dating, right? And thought, oh, I don't want to go out with this guy. I don't know. I wouldn't go out with that person or this, this one or that one. And really then you discover that there's actually something really special about this person. And I'm not saying you have to go out with people that you don't like, but I'm just telling you that um, when you meet Kevin, you are going to recognize um, something that oh, I'm, I had no idea. Like he's sensitive, he's kind, he's talented beyond belief. Oh my gosh, hello everyone. Hi Mandy, hey Corey, hey. Yes, Kevin is in good hands. He is actually in the green room right now. I'm I'm holding off um, because I want to just introduce him properly. But um, these are the things that I never thought I would see in a cockroach. And he's actually, so please just hold space for him because he has had some serious struggles in relationship. Haven't we all though? And um, so I am on task to give him a little love and dating coaching, to give him my expert advice. Um, and I am sharing this with you because I believe that this may also support you. Yay, hey Stephanie. So glad you guys are all here. and. If you're inspired, share this on your page, share this with your friends. This may be um, really helpful. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring Kevin in. Hold on. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Mason. Welcome. Hello. Hello. How are, you? are you so excited? I, I am. I'm, I'm so excited to finally meet you and see your face. And and to talk to you, I've it's I've been looking forward to it for weeks now. Oh my god, I am just so happy you're here because I, I'm not sure I could have handled one more of your kind of sad texts late night, you know? Yeah. I, I, so I'm glad we kind of came up with a solution to just um to talk about what's possible. So, you know. I know that you've been in New York. You're you're an actor. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I've seen you in what you were in Candyland. You said oh, right. Yeah, and and Candyman too. The horror. Oh, Candyman. Yes, yes. But sometimes I have crawled across a Candyland board game. I do admit it. I have. <laughs> I bet that's fun for you. Yeah, it's actually really fun. Maybe but not for around me but i think it's fun because then you get to go down the little slides yeah. yeah 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 it's very fun yeah so share a little bit about some of the um other things you like to do what you're doing in new york i'd love to hear oh um i have i have um i've lived here for a little bit it's a big city um i love under Around and I, there's so much good food, Macy. I get to try so many different foods of pizza. Um, so I've gotten to eat a lot of different 
Pizza, Joe's Pizza, that's a famous pizza place. Um, I've had a lot of dumplings that are good. Mm. I like to eat um, Thai food. There's really good Thai food here. That's one of my favorite things to do is to go out on and take a tour and see how much food I can sample in one night. And that's a lot of fun. That's a really good time. Um, I also like to um, exercise. I like to go to Central Park. Um, I've been doing that while, but exercise, and I actually enjoy running with people by my side because it's very um, motivating for me to keep going. Because you know, roaches run um, like three miles in 40 minutes. So it's really motivating to keep going. Wow, I did not know that. That's a lot, actually. Yeah, that's a lot. And I, I agree. I can see why you would want to um, be in New York City for the pizza. I know you also are big on giving back to your community. Tell oh, me yes. a little bit about that. Okay. Um, so, well, you know, uh, the life as a roach is very, very risky because we never know. We could get stepped on. We could get crushed. We could get sprayed at any moment. And so I run a support group for other bugs and roaches and insects that have had a traumatic um, near death experience and survived it. And I doing this because one time I got flushed down the toilet and I was very afraid and I held my breath for 40 minutes and I survived. So my survival taught me that I should help other bugs and insects that have probably gone through a similar experience. And it's been going pretty good. Wow. Okay. Well, that's really fascinating that you shared that with me. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll say more about that later. But um, I am curious to know, I know that dating in a pandemic in the city um, isn't always easy. And I know a lot of the people out there watching right now have also had some challenges in their love life. And I'm curious to know, like for you as a single roach in the city, like what's been going on for you? Um, well, there's just so many, there's so many pe or there's so many people, but there's also many insects and so many bugs. And so the dating pool is big, you know, it's really big and saturated and you can't go anywhere anymore. You know, I can't meet someone theater. I can't go and meet some, um, uh, in like, so now I have, I have to do the only, you know, safe way in the pandemic. And I just think it's really hard because we're all just having a tough time and everybody's mindset is in a, a really challenging place. And sometimes I feel like people are just on apps because they're bored and not necessarily because they they want to meet a really great roach like me. I feel like they're just there because they are tired of being in their house all day. And so they'll look at and then you'll start a conversation and then they'll just disappear like what to you. So that part is really hard is just because everyone's mindset is just in a confusing place and rightly so with what's going on in the world. Yeah, I hear you. I, I get that that would be really frustrating where there's a lot of singles out there who aren't really matching the level of commitment that you would like to actually create in your own relationship. Um, 
And yeah, um, thanks for sharing that. I'm, a, I'm actually imagining that there's a lot of the viewers out there who may be able to relate to this. And if, if you're listening and you relate to that, will you just, would you just give like a high five or like, yes, I hear you, something like that, so that Kevin knows that um, he's not alone. Oh, look, I heard New York. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite mug. I love that. My One of my favorites is Jan, go figure. I don't know why. Um, so, <laughs> so tell me, like, what is happening with you? Have you been dating? Like, where are you? right now in in that like what's your biggest um oh so you're getting some some uh agreement someone says yes i totally relate to that kevin oh great I, I, well i'm just glad i'm not alone um to answer your question i i actually did meet someone during uh -huh. the pandemic and it wasn't um i met i met this other bug and um we we got along really well and um we we didn't date for too long you know like maybe just like a month but long enough for me to like this other bug and um i really feel like um it's it's also hard because you can't really go anywhere so like you really all your only options are to go to the other bugs habitat you know, and uh -huh. hang out where, where, where they're living. And yeah. so that happened a lot. And then, um, so you did actually go to the other, your, your person's, I mean, your bug's place. Yeah. So I, I went to, I went to this female bugs, um, house a lot and, and she came over to my house and, um, I also like, I, I like to cook for myself. And, you know, I, a lot of times it's picking up food on the ground, but I do like to cook. And so for Thanksgiving, it was very out of my comfort zone, but I cooked Thanksgiving um, dinner for, for this, uh, this, this female bug that I was, you know, dating. And it was a really big deal because I cooked so much food and I'd never done any of that before was a pretty big deal and then I cooked like a couple more times and I don't know I felt like things were going well and then one day she just called me up and said or uh, she was supposed to come over and she called me up and she said I just wanted to let you know that I don't think that this is gonna work out and it's not um you it's me sometimes when we're hanging out, I feel really anxious and like I should leave. And that kind of hurt my, hurt my feelings. And, but then she just kept saying, it's, it's not you, it's me. Mm -hmm. And, and, and she kept saying things like long-term, like the thought of us, like going on a trip somewhere or like meeting our families that makes me anxious and mm -hmm. so it, well, I was really devastated because I felt like it came out of nowhere because yeah. she really acted like so I'm kind of just dealing with that right now that's why I reached out to you because at night I like to get on the internet and I had seen so much about you and I that's why I reached because I was like I feel like you could help yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is that is a really hard thing. I mean, we say that all the time, like, oh, you know, that that phrase, it's it's not you, it's me. And I mean, are you open to feedback, Kevin? Yeah, please give me feedback. Yeah. So anyway, I would just say that, you know, that really is true. I mean, a hundred percent of the time and for those of you out there listening when when someone you know disappears or can't handle something or walks away i mean he literally i mean she literally said that but um you know sometimes it's hard to not 
just go into a story about how we did something wrong or or I wonder even with the Thanksgiving dinner if if you ever felt like wow I shouldn't have done so much for her like oh my god that was too much I did too you know what 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 was it and and so it's really important to know that when things don't work out it is never about you and it may be easy to think okay um yeah i mean like i just said what did i say what did i do what could i have done different but the truth is if it's not a match it just isn't a match and I just noticed when you described that situation with her that there was a lot that she was saying around I got I get anxious I get anxious I get anxious and what I like to share with my clients is that I mean Kevin it's really clear that you truly do have a big heart and that it is really clear that you are also recognizing that you really want a relationship so that um you know you know that and who you're dating or meeting with they may not be able to they may not have that capacity so um so you know anywhere where you are making it a problem with you or judging yourself this would be a time to let that go and and know that um, you can't do the wrong thing with the right person. I mean, that is true. Because um, I, I actually, I know, and I, I hope it's okay that I share this with, I, I know you mentioned too that, like in your beginning with her, that you had written her a rap. And oh, I imagine oh. that was super vulnerable to gift her that. It, it, was, it was, that was actually, that was actually how we started talking. So I, I, that's how I messaged her on the app, on the app, I, and I said things like, we go outside and go for a walk, and maybe even later we can talk, and we can go and around and eat some food that's on the ground. And I said so many things that I really wanted to happen, but I, I, I don't do that for just any bug. You know, you have to be special for for me to do that for you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I totally hear you. Yeah, I'm really glad you shared that. Was it, was it helpful to hear what I shared with you? Oh, very, very helpful, very helpful. And it helps to put things into perspective for so that I kind of, I just feel like I'm kind of hating on myself and I don't want to do that anymore. So I think what you said was very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, so, I mean, truly, I know that um, cockroaches, you know, versus humans, like I'm aware that your, your lifetime is a little shorter. And, and even with, with humans and people that I, I'm coaching, um, I would say that one of the most important things is like being able to have the skills and tools so that you can have that resilience in dating so that you're not losing time, you know, in heartbreak and feeling like you can't bounce back because, you know, the more time that you're, you're down, so to speak, that um, the, you know, that's time you can't get back. Yeah, that's very true because, you know, um, cockroaches, we don't live very long. Like male cockroaches like me, we only live for 362 days. And female cockroaches, they live a little longer. They live like 700 days. But still, it's not a lot of time. And then you have all this pressure of, I haven't found someone and I want to start a family and all these things. And then just like you said, when you're going through a, a breakup, it's like more pressure of the, and you start focusing on the time aspect and like you're running out of time. Yeah, yeah. 
It's really true. I mean, I would say that that's kind of the the biggest point, you know, um, that if you know that you want to be with another cockroach, you know you want to share time, you know you want to go like scrape up dumplings and pizza and get that Thai food together, like that, that it is important. I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up, straight up, Kevin, that like making this a priority is going to matter. That's good to know. I, I think you're very right. And I should, I should just keep going forward, you know, keep moving in the right direction. Yeah. Well, I'm here for you. And I, and I know you and I planned on doing multiple coaching sessions this week. We're going to come back Wednesday and do another one, but um, I, I have to admit something to you, Kevin. What, what is it? Um, I, I have something that I actually feel kind of embarrassed about sharing with you because before we met, um, I had this other idea about cockroaches, but I'm hoping that maybe we can, we can figure this out because I actually, in my business, as a coach for single women, um, I actually just just last week, you know, right before you reached out to me, I actually purchased um, 50 cockroaches to um, for my clients and people in the community to name after their exes to kind of do the same thing that you're dealing with. It's like naming the cockroach after the ex and then the cockroach is fed to meerkats on Valentine's Day as part of getting over their heartbreak. And I and it's really hard, but to share this with you, um and I I just I just hope you understand. I mean I, I think your species is is actually quite service based, but but I feel like I have to tell you that. Well, I, I appreciate your honesty and I am surprised and but also you're right and we are we are a species really we sack ourselves um, if it's going to help else you know like there's there's other countries that use our species for cooking and we're used for farming and used also for even pharmaceuticals like for medicine. So there are times when cockroaches are actually we're we're willing to sacrifice our life if it's gonna help humanity. So I feel even though I was a little shocked, especially because meerkats are pretty feisty and they can just be downright rude. But but I think I think that you're actually doing a good thing because it it sounds like you're helping people to be able to let go of their of their their exes yeah i i would just say i feel kind of bad because i i feel like you're having that same issue and it's like who's gonna do that for you so i i just want to say that i'm here for you know whatever coaching that you need kevin because you know i wouldn't i wouldn't expect that you would want to have um one of your own sacrificed in in your name um and you're right you know meerkats are are quite aggressive and um i thank you i thank you for you and your species for being protein for humans for being um medicine for humans um and all the things that i actually had no idea uh you did so so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, we're we're just happy. We're happy to help, even because you know every day we don't know if we're how much longer we're going to live. Because, like I was saying before, someone could step on us. We could get crushed by a car. We could get sprayed with raid. You know any of those things. So our life is already risky, but we're willing to do it if it's gonna if it's for the greater good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
I I really appreciate that and I thank you. And I know that, you know, I'm guessing that our conversation has helped others out there. If you're out there listening and this conversation has given you a tidbit around dating in the pandemic or, you know, actually really being able to get over an ex and release, um, you know, any place where you're, you're feeling like you did something wrong, um, please post in the comments. I mean, I think today's biggest message is that when you're dating and you're putting yourself out there and if someone for some reason at any point uh, doesn't choose you, that it's still not about you. There's, it's just never about you. It's always, you know, about what people are available to have and what people's preferences, preferences are. You being you is the most um, attractive thing for the person that is meant to be yours. And if you have that desire within your heart, that already means that your person exists. And I know, Kevin, that for that person who couldn't um, couldn't continue uh, doing the things that you love to do. I mean, it's clear you love making food. You love, you know, hanging out and, and, and cooking for others and, you know, scraping up that crumb from the subway and bringing it home and making it into something special. Like, that's who you are. And I, I want to say, keep doing you because you're amazing, Kevin. And your best right roach is out there. And so everyone else, you know, someone says it's not rejection. It just means they're not a match. It's true. It's almost like socks. I don't know how many roaches wear socks, but I, I have some I on right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love those, Kev. That's cute. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, when you're you're doing laundry and you're putting your socks together and there's not a match, it's like there's not this emotional thing about it. That's just like, you know what? No, where's the match? And I promise if you can stay focused in that direction, that love will find you. And um, I'm looking forward. Are, are you open to coming back here again? in two days to on wednesday night to do another live with me i i would love to i would love to macy i feel like you've already helped me so much and put things in a better perspective for me uh, uh, my love languages are acts of service and spending quality time with and i don't have to stop doing things that's what i learned from you um, tonight and that, that there is someone out there for me. So I, I, I feel evaded and I feel excited and not so sad anymore. Oh, that is so exciting. That is so great. And so make sure, you know, you bring your question for next week and we'll, we'll I mean, next, next for Wednesday and we'll, we'll take that as um, cockroach confessions number two. And I'm sure that'll be helpful for everyone. I just appreciate so much your vulnerability and you're willing to share. And anyone out there who has questions, post them in the comments. You know, we, you know, Kevin and I together may be able to have a conversation about what it is that's bugging you. What's bugging you? Oh my gosh. Um, oh, look at you. I know. You should do comedy. Yeah. And so, Kevin, can you just plug your ears for a second, just really quick? Just plug your ear. Yeah. Um, so anyone out there watching, I did mention that I purchased 50 cockroaches. So if you do have something that's bugging you and you'd like to apply to to have a win it to enter, to have a chance to win one of these cockroaches where You'll get to name it after your ex or whatever is bugging you. Is it people pleasing? Is it not feeling enough? And then on Valentine's Day, those cockroaches will be fed to the meerkats, which basically is, you know, their food. And you'll get to have that experience of it being released for good. So go to bighappylove.com to enter to win one of these. You'll get to put in what you want to name it. 
and that's your chance to win. I'm so excited to be able to offer that. Okay. Come back, Kevin. Come back, Kevin. Oh, are you done saying what you didn't want me to hear? Yes. Yep. Yep. So, okay. all right. We'll meet back here soon. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thanks for Thank being you, here. Bye.